Hello, welcome back to Family Tech, the channel that has all of the tech tips and advice and news that you didn't even know you needed. So definitely give me a subscribe, that helps me out and I love doing this, so I wanna keep doing it for a long time. So subscribe and get notified anytime I upload. I do upload every Thursday with tech tips and advice, but I do upload throughout the week sometimes with other items, some shorts, some product reviews, things like that. So definitely subscribe and you can be notified anytime that that happens. So let's dig right into today's topic. So school has started for just about everybody now and schedules are getting out of hand. And I don't know about you, but I prefer having my calendar on my phone, but I would like the calendar organized for my family so that everybody can be on the same page. So today we're gonna talk about how best to set up a family calendar on your devices. Hello friends, I'm Sarah Kimmel, your friendly neighborhood tech expert. You can find me helping families with tech problems on TV news, podcasts, Instagram, Facebook, and my website, FamilyTechZone.com. All right, welcome back. Whether you are an iPhone user, an Android user, just computer, anything, Google Calendar is going to be where you want to store your calendars. And I'm going to give you some really awesome tips and tricks how to make this the best family calendar possible. So the first thing you're gonna need is a Google account. Most of you probably already have a Google account. If you don't, go ahead and go to gmail.com, set up an account for yourself. So you can actually have a Google account with another email address. So you don't have to have a Gmail address in order to have a Google account. Uh, it is going to give you Gmail as well, but you can use so say you have a work email, you have an iCloud email, Yahoo, you can sign up for a Google account with that email address and use the Google products and services with that email address. So um, go ahead and go to google.com, set up an account, and you are off to the races. So that's the first thing you need to do is set up a Google account. The second thing you're gonna need to do is set up Google accounts for all of the members of your family. Now, it gets a little tricky when we're dealing with kids. So 13 years old is the age of enlightenment for all products online. This is due to COPA restrictions. So COPA stands for the Children's Online Privacy and Protection Act. It's a law and it states that most children under the age of 13 cannot divulge personal information. So that's why most social media platforms require children to be at least 13 to sign up for their account. And that is why you need to be at least 13 to set up a Google account. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. You can set up accounts for your children that are under 13 through Google. Um, and this is to helpful for Google Family Link if you need to. That's what I found. I'm saying Google a lot and all of the devices in my house are totally freaking out. So, um, so I apologize for any distractions that are coming about from saying the G word too much. So children who are under the age of 13 can have Google accounts. This is usually through Google Family Link. And if you set up an account through Google Family Link and your child is under the age of 13, they cannot have an individual calendar. However, they can utilize a family calendar that goes with the entire family. Everybody can have access to it that are members of that family but you can't have it individual, which is what I really like to do. So I would reserve any of those email addresses that are for children who are under the age of 13 to a different account that you're not gonna want as their permanent address. So the way I do this, especially if my kid is under 13, I actually set up a regular Google account and change their age. I do not give them access to this account. So I will make their uh, the year they were born, maybe the year I was born, or just something that is over the age of 13. You can change this later after they do turn 13, but before they're 13, I like to have just a regular Google account that they do not have the password to so that I can set up all of this great calendar sharing. 
So now that we have the accounts situated, let me explain how you set it up. So the first account is yours. You totally know that you have your own calendar in your Google account. If you go to calendar.google.com, sign in with your account, and then you have access to your main calendar. I like to change the name of this calendar to like my name and appointments or something like that, just so it's a little easier to tell when it's going to these other places. So the next thing you're gonna do on your own calendar is tap the three dots next to the calendar and go to settings. Find the sharing settings and share the calendar with every Google account associated with your family members. So your significant other's account, your children's different accounts, add them all here. Make sure the settings are set to the highest level possible. The next thing you're going to do is sign in to calendar.google.com as one of these other accounts and do the same thing on their calendar. So their main calendar, you're going to hit the buttons, go to settings, and manage the sharing and add every member of the family. For kids, I usually don't actually add my account or my spouse's account to their Google calendars because they don't care if I have an appointment during the day. They really just care about their own appointments. It's not as important to share your own calendar with your child, but it is important that you put in you and your spouse and anybody else that's gonna be managing that calendar into this sharing section. Now, when you set it to the highest level of sharing possible, it actually comes in just as a regular calendar on your account so you can see all of the different calendars that you have access to just in your main account and this is great because it also syncs over to your phone really nicely and you can toggle on and off any calendars that you don't want to view so if I'm looking at this I have a ton of Google calendars and I only want to see my appointments I can just right click here and make it so I can only see those appointments or I can toggle on just the appointments for the members of my family so you can only view those appointments. I really like that because like I said I have a ton of other calendars and it can get really cluttery with these other calendars. The other really great thing about doing it this way is is when your child signs into a new phone or anything like that they just sign in and all of their appointments sync over because it's not a calendar that you have for them it's a calendar that they have that is being shared with you and the other really great thing is when you're looking at this calendar you can see it's automatically color-coded because everyone has their own calendar so aside from getting all of these appointments sorted out color-coded everything is looking great there are actually several other calendars I want to talk about that really can just make your whole family run smoother run easier because everyone's on the same page so the first calendar I want to talk about is a meal planning calendar so what I would do is I take the meals for every day that I've got scheduled out so we're having pizza on Friday we're having chicken pillows on Thursday and I will make sure that it's on those days and then I share that calendar calendar with the members of my family. So I eliminate the question that I hate the most every single day, which is what's for dinner. So this way they can just look at their phone, they can look at the calendar and see exactly what's for dinner and they don't have to ask me about it. So I really love just like planning meals through that and what I also like is I have kind of an eight week rotation of meals that I've already planned I already have my shopping lists created for each individual week it doesn't deviate I make the same thing every eighth week and I can set up these recurring appointments in Google Calendar so that I know exactly what week I'm on and what is going to be made that week. And my shopping list is already created. Everything is done for me. I just have to go in the kitchen and actually make the dinner, which is my like least favorite chore ever. I don't like making dinner. I don't like cooking. I'm sorry. 
So the second calendar that I have is a training calendar. So I like to work out, I like to run, I do sign up for half marathons frequently. So I like putting my training calendar in here, which workouts I'm going to do. I do a lot of streaming workouts, so I can see exactly which workout I'm going to do on which streaming service every single morning. I can see what mileage I need for my training program. So if I need six miles on this Saturday, I like, I can look at my calendar and see exactly, oh, okay, I'm running six miles today. So that is my other favorite Google Calendar. So we've got meal planning, we have training. The next one is budgeting. So I also really like putting all of my bills into the Google Calendar so that I can see exactly what day things are due. So it comes right up on my calendar. Oh got to pay my mortgage today, I hop online, pay my mortgage, or if I have it on auto pay, sometimes I really like to just hop on, make sure it got paid so that I know that I don't have to do anything. You know, sometimes when you're on auto pay, maybe your card expires or things like that and so it can fail and you want to make sure you're on top of it so you don't get your electricity shut off or anything like that. So just make sure all of the due dates for anything that you've got is in a separate calendar. Again, I separate these out so I can toggle them off so I don't have to see them cluttering up the rest of the day so I can actually see appointments that I need to keep. And now that fall is here, we've got sports again. My daughter's in volleyball, my son has sports as well. So keeping track of practices, of games, and all of the above, I create a separate Google Calendar for different sports teams. So if my daughter is on volleyball, I'll create a whole Google Calendar for volleyball that has practices and games. Sometimes you can actually subscribe to the calendar that's already been created. So the volleyball league that she's in has all their games uh, posted online. You can subscribe to that calendar so that you can see it. it's separated out but you've got it on your phone and anything like that. The other two calendars that I really like to subscribe to are school calendars. So if your child's in elementary school, a lot of times elementary school or junior high or high school will publish their calendar and you can just subscribe to that calendar using a link on their website and adding it to your own Google Calendar. So anything that's happening at the school you can be aware of, but again, you can toggle that calendar off when you only want to see appointments. So I really like using their own calendar. They're already keeping it. You don't have to duplicate anything. They can just post the things on their schedule and it's automatically updating to your phone. So it's super, super helpful to get those school calendars listed in your account as well. So then another calendar that you can kind of subscribe to, it really depends on what kind of system your office is using. A lot of offices use Office 365. Unfortunately, it doesn't sync very well, but you can get it to sync. I will say the only caveat here is recurring appointments get a little tricky and get a little messed up. But if you go into Power Automate, uh, this is a application that is in Office 365 and you can just Google Power Automate. You can set up a flow that should sync your Google Calendar with a Office 365 calendar. Um, that way you can see all of your appointments that are at work in your Google Calendar. The other way is maybe you can subscribe or share that calendar. It does get a, a little bit complicated and a little bit tricky, but um, you know if you're trying to set it up, feel free to reach out to me. I've got it set up on my own, so I can help walk you through that. Uh, I always am available on Instagram on my DMs, so if you're looking to sync an Office 365 calendar with a Google Calendar, uh, definitely hit me up and I can try and help you out through that. The final calendar I have is a routine calendar. I am a huge fan of routines. It's actually why I created the software program that I created over 10 years ago. Um, actually, I think at this point it was probably over 15 years ago. Um, it was called Daily Home Planner and, you know, Really, it was a problem of timing. We had just developed it for Windows right as mobile was taking off, so we um, kind of missed the boat on the whole thing because everyone wanted it mobile and we 
had just developed it for Windows and we just didn't have the resources to bring it mobile, but it was really a great program. But what I really liked about it is that I could set a routine and I can set different routines for my children, for myself, for anybody else, and I could see at a glance what those routines were and then uh, any appointments I had would come on top of those routines. So I can say, you know, every day at 5.30 I wake up and then at 6 o'clock I start working out and then at 7 o'clock I start eating breakfast, things like that. So um, all of these things are in a routine and I really just liked to see the routine and then see any appointments on top. So I created this whole software program specifically to do that. Now I just do it in Google Calendar. It's a whole separate calendar on its own. Uh, when my kids were little, I created little um, Google calendars for their routines as well but um, so now I just use my own routine because they can manage their own routines because they're a little bit older now but um, so you could create a routine calendar for each of your children just so you know exactly what's going on especially if you're homeschooling or anything like that super helpful to have a set routine every day and you can just view that right there in Google Calendar so those are the different Google calendars that can really just help make your home super organized. Everybody knows exactly what's going on and when. So Google Calendar is it. It syncs with iPhone. It syncs with Android. It syncs everywhere. So um, if you have a family that has all sorts of different devices, even if you have a family with all the same device, my answer is the same. Use Google Calendar, create all of these different calendars, and you can have a super organized family schedule and family calendar. That's it for today's tip on Thursday. Again, follow me on Instagram. I answer my direct messages there. I do have really quick tips daily on stories. I do iOS, Android, Windows, Smart Home, Parental Controls, all of those I have a daily tip on my stories. I do reels frequently, so definitely check me out on Instagram. Subscribe to this channel so that you know what's going on. When you subscribe, it helps me out, and so that's a way that you can show your appreciation for my tips, and I would really appreciate that. So until next Thursday, we'll see ya.